We're now joined by former Mets general manager Jim Duquette. And Jim, how were the Mets able to get this deal done so quickly? Well, you know what? I'll tell you what, Eamon. It's pretty impressive what they were able to do. And he's the first piece, I think, certainly of their free agent signing period. But they went right to the top. I mean, he was the best closer of the game. They paid him like it. They went well over Aroldis Chapman's number, $86 million. The average annual value for a closer, the record was Liam Hendricks, who was $18 million. He surpassed both Diaz did. And that's how you do it. If you want the best closer, you don't want him to go out there as a free agent. You don't want him to go to the Dodgers or the Yankees who are going to need closers this year. You go sign him. You go give him a little bit of money that might be an overpay, whatever the case is, it's deserving. And it kind of sets the tone for that free agent period. This is the quiet period. So only the, the teams that have their own free agents can sign them. And so, you know, they took advantage of that little window. Yeah, quiet no more in Queens. Uh, no one's going to argue that Diaz was the top priority for the Mets this offseason and the impact he made on this franchise. But what concerns are there about giving a 29-year-old closer a five-year deal worth more than $100 million? Well, listen, these uh, closers get used a lot, as they should. They're getting paid a lot of money to finish out games. You know, we saw Buck Showalter use him in the eighth inning a lot of times this year. And the ninth, it takes a toll over periods of time. If you're not careful, you see a drop off and stuff. Now, his fastball velocity has continued to go up since they acquired him. It's up four miles an hour. So I don't think it's going to be in the short term. It's the back end of the deal that you always have to worry about. We saw that with Chapman. Chapman lost it, uh, lost his command, lost his stuff, all of that in the last year of his deal. And so... It's like a buyer beware always in the free agent market. And usually that fourth or fifth year, especially with relievers, that can be a little inconsistent. That's probably the concern right now. You're not concerned about it. You're trying to win now. You're trying to win in 2023 and 2024. And Diaz is going to help you do it. Yeah, win now is definitely on the mission statement for Steve Cohen and the Mets. All right, you use the term set the tone. So, Jim, what can we read into this deal as to how it might impact the negotiations with Brandon Nimmo and Jacob deGrom? Well, I think uh, with Diaz, you, you know, you need another party, right? The Mets wanted to sign him. He wanted to stay there. You end up getting a deal. You know, it's a little more difficult with Brandon Nimmo. I think he really wants to stay a Met because, but, you know, he grew up there. He was homegrown. But, yeah, Scott Boris, you don't go and and take Scott Boris as your agent and think that you're not going to test free agency. So there's that. And then Jacob DeGrom's already kind of announced he was going to opt out. Now, there's still some conf conflicting reports whether that actually will happen or not. Either way, if you want either one of these two guys, you have to pay them at the top of the market. Really, the top of the market for center fielders is George Springer's number, about $150 million. And you only have to look internally to Max Scherzer, his average annual value, what's at around $43 million or so. That's where I think the DeGrom number has to be. If it's multi-years, multi you can maybe scale it back to the $40 million range, but it's going to be expensive too. So you know, I think that the price tag for Diaz pushed not only uh, DeGrom and Nimmo, but it pushed the entire free agent market up.